All right, so you're talking about Terraform today. Now, what is Terraform? Terraform is basically um, a little bit, you can say, like Ansible, but uh, it's not as broad as Ansible. I mean, Ansible is far way better compared to Terraform, but Terraform exists because of one single thing that uh, Terraform can do, which Ansible cannot, that is creation of resources on cloud. Ansible uh, directly cannot create resources on cloud. Ansible can be indirectly used for creating resources. Like let's say there is a machine on that machine. Um, we have got, let's say Amazon, AWS, CLI and all those things installed. So we can write, write a script for launching multiple machines and through Ansible, we can deploy the script. In this way we can use Ansible for launching, uh, launching, let's say EC2 instances, if I say, right. But uh, Terraform is a, such a software that was, let's say such an application which allows you to directly go ahead and work on cloud means I can install Terraform on a machine and, and at the same point of time I can go ahead and I can try to launch instances through that. I'll show you the example of launching instances. You can do whatever you want. You can launch resources on cloud, right? You can launch an infrastructure on cloud. And that is why these softwares, these tools are known as infrastructure as a code. Now Terraform is, uh, we do not use YAML in case of Terraform. So that is one thing. In Terraform, we have a new kind of language which is known as the HCL language or the HashiCorp language. Okay, so HashiCorp language because HashiCorp is the company which has uh, built the application, built the tool of Terraform. So it is they have they have come up with a particular language also which is known as the HashiCorp language or HCL in short. Uh, that ends with the .tf extension, right? Terraform, Terraform, uh, you know, configuration file and all those things that ends with the .tf extension. And when it ends with .tf extension, what basically happens is, uh, but HashiCorp language is not like very different compared to EML. I mean, it is more or less similar, but there is a little bit of difference. So if someone knows EML and JSON, they will be very easily able to pick up the HashiCorp language. That is the, basically the idea. Anyway, so let us go ahead and let us try to uh, start installing Terraform on this particular machine. Let us see how we can actually play with it. So I shall go to my mobile exterm. I'll take this IP address. I'll start by applying an update. So sudo yum update by Right. So let us go ahead and let us actually uh, download Terraform over here. Now Terraform doesn't come with the, with the package manager. We have to download it separately. So just go to the website called terraform.io. That is the website slash downloads.html. Okay. This is the page. So I want to download it's a Linux 64 bit. I'll copy this link. I'll come over here. I'll be like wget and I'll paste that. And you can see I've downloaded the Terraform thing over here. Now let me go ahead and let me quickly unzip this. So unzip Terraform whatever. And now if I do an ls, you'll find out Terraform is here, right? So I can just delete the zip file right now. So I can go ahead and I can delete the zip. So right. So now we are just having the Terraform file over here. Now this Terraform, um, 
we can actually check the Terraform version and all those things if you want to. So this comment should work out. Okay, sorry. You can see this is working out, right? Terraform version if I'm using. Now, uh, there, is, there is one particular thing. You can see that this Terraform, whatever I'm writing, now this thing it is taking only from this directory. I need to write a dot slash. If I if I try to go to some other, let's say I'm creating a directory over here. So mkdir, let's say Terraform executable, I'm calling it, right? Let's say, let me moving this, let me move this Terraform into a Terraform executable, let's say. And now if I write Terraform version, it will definitely not work out because it doesn't know what that is, right? So what I need to do is that now in order to make sure that it always works out, I will be adding this particular path of Terraform installation. So if I go for which Terraform it will not work out, right? Now nothing will work out right now. So I'll, what I shall do is that I shall be taking this Terraform and I'll put in the Terraform uh, path wherever it is within the path variable. So you know, there's a path variable, right? If I go like eco dollar path. So these are the paths. You can see exactly it did it did its searching part in the path itself. So whatever we have in a path variable within that only it will be searching, right? So uh, there are there are multiple options. One thing I can do is that I can actually go for see there is an if I run LSL there is a um, okay sorry LSA All right. So there are a lot of folders, right? Out of this you can see uh, if I create a folder called dot local. If I create a folder under home, it is a dot local that will automatically come in. If I create a folder called bin, it will automatically it means if I change the Terraform executable folder name. So let's say Terraform executable to bin, right? Then let us see. We've got bin folder, and if I go to bin, we have got our Terraform, right? So now if I come back to my home and I go like which Terraform, right? You can see it is taking it because bin is in the path. And now I can run the Terraform version and it should work out. Did you get the point guys? Are we all clear on this? Yes. Got it. Okay, Moina, got the point? Yeah. yeah. Right. So I, I put it inside the bin. Achha, now tell me one thing guys. What if I wanted to keep it inside Terraform executable and add this guy in the path? How should I have done that? Pardon, if I had, if I wanted to keep this not under bin, but under Terraform executable folder itself, and I wanted to add this particular directory in my path, how should I have done that? We, we could have created bin and inside that you can keep it. No, I don't, I don't want bin. I just want that particular folder automatically gets, you know, expressed, exposed as a path. How could I have done that? It's very easy. You, you should, you just had to to go like path equals to whatever the path is there already. Along with that, add this particular thing, home, EC2 user and Terraform executable. So just like you can see with colon, 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 everything is added. So this will also have got added over there, right? That's like colon user has been right. User local has been similarly. If I add this one to the path and let's say if I'm doing this, for example, okay, Terraform executable. Let's say, if I do so, and now if I go ahead and if I try to, let's say, do, let's say, you know, eco dollar path, we'll find out that this one has also been added to the path. So now if I had done this, that would also have worked. Either I had to put it into the bin folder, or I would have directly added that particular thing in the path. Got the point? These two options we have. Clear? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So now that we have this particular thing, let us go ahead and let us try to. Mm, no. So this one LS, we have got the bin folder. Let us create scripts folder, right? So MKDIR scripts. MP and Terraform, we can run from here also, right? This is working out. The command is working out. So let us start by writing scripts. So it is very easy. It is very straightforward. You'll understand in, in, in 10 minutes, it will be clear to Terraform. It's so easy. Okay. So the first thing I shall be doing is that I need to tell Terraform that I want to go ahead and I want to use 
uh, your AWS cloud for this particular, you know, whatever I'm doing. So what I shall do, I shall actually go ahead and I shall be adding this particular, uh, you know, the, the Terraform that I have got the Terraform, no, script I shall be writing one. And which script is going to be for basically telling that I am trying to use the provider AWS. So there are multiple providers of Terraform. I mean, what happens over here when you, uh, when I say provider is basically, so there, there is a provider of Terraform that actually interfaces with Azure cloud. There is a provider that interfaces with, let's say Oracle cloud. That is one with AWS cloud. That is one with Google cloud. That is one with Terraform cloud itself. So different, different clouds, they've got different, different providers. So they'll download a particular file over here to make sure that, um, you know, this thing is actually working out. So I'll create a new file with the name provider TF and inside that I shall be writing provider AWS. That's it. Done. I'll start a bracket, I'll end the bracket. I'll not do anything about it. Just provider is AWS. This much is fine. If I go ahead and now, actually, uh, let's say for example, now I've got this particular provider over here, right? So if I try to go for initializing Terraform over here, just like you need to initialize Git in a particular folder. So this folder, I'm going to initialize Terraform, but before that I mentioned the provider is going to be who? Provider is going to be AWS. So therefore it downloads the AWS. Now there is a command called Terraform FMT, okay? If I do so, nothing will happen actually. You have to write down which file you want to do. So if this for format, provider.tf. So that will give you an idea. I mean, in case provider.tf has got some issues, it will fix it automatically as soon as you run this particular command. Okay. That's why we have this particular command, Terraform FMT. So now if I do a cat of, let's say provider.tf, you will see it does not change anything because there is nothing error in this particular. We didn't have anything. What will it change? But had it had some things been there, it would have changed that particular thing. Right. We'll be starting by initializing Terraform in this folder. And remember, since I have the provider file, it will be initializing only for AWS. So Terraform in it. Go for it. Okay. Skipping back and initialization, root module, configuration, generator, and fixed writing. I get reference initialize configuration upgrades needed. So the Terraform calls adders in the configuration prevented full initialization. Terraform version 0.12. This might be because configuration syntax constructs something. Okay, now this is not what exactly I was looking for. Uh, this is absolutely not what I was looking for. Mm. Is it due to that okay. provider? Provider spelling. Really? Yeah. Spelling is wrong. Okay. So let us go and let us edit it. Okay. Yes, this is what it should be. It should be downloading the AWS plugin. This is what I was looking for. It should download the AWS plugin, right? So Terraform is successfully initialized. We, we can see I've downloaded the version 2.47 over here for AWS and all those things. Actually, now, now understand, now this particular uh, machine, my Terraform machine is going to be the machine that can actually go ahead and actually create resources on AWS. So therefore, I need to give this machine permission, enough permission to work on AWS cloud, right? I need to add some, uh, you know, add a creator user and log into the user, programmatic access user, right? So basically what I'm trying to, I can also add roles to this particular machine, but ultimately I need that somehow I should be able to go ahead and access the AWS services. So for that, I need an user, which user will be doing this particular, let's say I'm you know, deleting this user. Okay, or maybe, oh, I created one called Terraform user. Let me delete that one also. And let me create another, you know, one thing, one next time, one another time. This particular is the same user, right? So I'm going to call this thing. Let's say Terraform. There, there is no such name, but I'm just giving it programmatic access. Come to permission and give the administrative access so that it can do anything, whatever it wants to do, right? Review and create the user. You'll get the access key and the secret access key. These two things we will need, right? Access key, copy it, and first login. So AWS configure right? and login access key, secret access key, copy this, paste it. Uh, default region, let's say you want to launch in Virginia. So US East, let's say one, okay. Output format, I'm writing JSON. So if it needs to give me some output, it should give it to me in JSON format, right? So this much I've done. So now what has happened? I can go ahead and I can operate on the AWS resources. I'm just thinking about it. If I try to go like, um, AWS 
uh, let's say EC2. Uh, what are the describe instances? Describe instances, right? So this should work out. You, you're getting the output, right? So that means you are now having a permission to go ahead and actually play with this particular things. That's what I needed. So now once you have uh, got enough permission and all those things, then what you have to do is that you have to start by writing. Um, so there is, there has to be a file within the main.tf. Okay. So just like let's in programming, we have the main function, right? Where we start. So here also we'll require a function, a file called main.tf. Main.tf is the file where um, Terraform actually looks into, okay. For doing the things. So we have to start, we can create resources by writing a resource and the kind of resource I need to create. So let's say I want to create AWS instance. I'll write AWS instance. Okay. And uh, you can give this particular resource a name to refer to, right? Let's say I'm getting, going to give it a name for the, for example, as um, my instance. Okay. So this is the name that I am giving over here. This, this name will not reflect on AWS. This is for me to talk about this particular, uh, you know, resource that's it my instance and what am i writing within it let's see let's start by writing that okay which sort of instance i want to use right so let's say you know the ami i have to tell which ami i want to use so let's go and let's tell that let's find out which ami you want to use so come to your ec2 All right, let us say I want to launch an uh, maybe Ubuntu server. Okay, so that has got this particular AMI ID. Let's copy this AMI ID. That's it. Uh, okay, hang on a second. This is ARM, right? I don't want that. I want this one. Copy this. And uh, what I can do is I can. Uh, Okay, fine, cool. I can go ahead with this. So let's say I'm copying this particular AMI and I'm writing down over here, right? So, so I can mention which AMI. Now remember, which all things you must need to select. You must need to select the AMI and then you definitely need to select the T2 micro, this one, right? So this also, if you do a review and launch right now. So in the last screen, you could not. That means you cannot launch a server only by mentioning the AMI. At least you have to mention the instance type as well right so let us go and let us change write down the instance type this one instance type okay it's a t2 micro okay that's it save it so this can actually launch a new machine if i try to run it because t2 micro and instant and that one right I, I wrote that particular AMI. So that together, the only this information together can build a complete. So let us try to um, do a format. Okay. So now let us try to do a cat of main.tf. See, it has changed a little bit, right? So there it has introduced a lot of space. I mean, in this particular one, it had nothing else to do. It just gave the space, but it does a lot of formatting. Now we have got the resources AWS instance and uh, the, so the what we are trying to no, call it is my instance. I have to go for writing Terraform plan. If I write Terraform plan, what it will do, it will be actually telling that, okay, fine. So this particular main.tf that I have created, let us create a plan document out of it. Plan document means all of the features will be written, even though all of them will not have values as of now. See this. Terraform plan, it is asking on which region I want to you know, do this particular thing. Now, if you remember that I gave my EC to my you know AWS configured user a permission at US East one, so I cannot really go and work on somewhere else because I'll have permission, I'll I won't have any permission. Let me work on US East one. Okay. Every time you want to do this thing, it will always ask you about the about the region. Every single time you plan, because that makes sense. You can launch one plan in multiple places. See this. And this is what it has written, right? So it, this is how you have to write. So this is the complete thing, right? So it created the complete thing, whatever you need, right? So the AMI, it is populated because we wrote it. The ID and all these things will not come. They will only come after apply. Apply basically means applying this plan. It created the plan document, okay? You can see private DNS, nothing is coming up as, as of now. 
EBS block device. So in this way, this is infrastructure as a code, people. You can create an entire infrastructure, right? So this is a server. You can create storage. You can create anything, whatever you want, right? This is the infrastructure as a code. The entire infra will be stored in a plan document. You just deploy the plan document and that is done, right? Had you specified an out parameter, dash out, and then a name, so what would have, have, have happened, this plan would have got saved into a separate file, right? As of now, if I show, show you LSA, see, there, are, uh, there is a dot terraform, right? That this dot terraform has come over here. So within this, it is controlling everything. If you remember, when you did git in it, you got a dot git right, folder from which it was controlling. So now from here, it is controlling. Now what happens, see, when you try, when you not save the plan into something else, you just let it be like this. Then immediately if I run a, you know, apply over here, Terraform apply, it will apply this plan. But let's say someone has built some other plan. I, I have only built some other plan, but I want to apply the older plan. I cannot do it because I didn't save it somewhere, right? So let's say I want to go for Terraform apply. See, Terraform apply is actually applying the change that you have done or in the in this particular thing. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to add one particular server, right? That's what we are doing. We are nothing, we're changing nothing. We are nothing destroying. And you do Terraform apply, it will be like US East one. And you have to write down yes. So it's telling this is what it is. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I want to. So write down yes. And you can see this telling that creating my instance. Come to AWS. Okay. Come to let's say instances. See this. It is creating one instance, right? T2 micro automatically saying it is pending so it's creating one you can see All right still creating it is telling 20 seconds 30 seconds right done it says apply complete that means it is running now here you go this is one but see it doesn't come with a key okay so you cannot log in into this machine you cannot log in into this machine Right, but anyway, that, that that's fine because we have alternative options to use the machine. You cannot log in, so this does not come with this particular thing, but it's perfectly fine, right? Because we can actually get this thing added to our Ansible, if you remember, right? So now you've got the IP address, so you can add the IP address in the Ansible and just start working. You can you can control it from there. You don't need you don't don't even need to log into this machine at all. Okay. Anyway, so now if I try to go show you the show you the LSA, you'll find out there is a new file created terraform.tfstat if you open up that file let's say vi you'll be able to see this is the exact information about this particular whatever you have launched right so that particular things information is coming over there that's the things i launched and uh, yeah right version 4 and every single thing is coming up right this is your um, you know th this is a json format this particular format is a json format Right, it, it is it is a JSON format in which it has stored the state. Right, you can see it has taken the US East One series writing. So if you go over here, it has taken the US East One C. Right, all those things are happening. So everything is written over here. So this TF state is a file where all the things will be written always. Always it will be written over there. Right, the subnet ID, every single thing is there. Right. Now let us say, let us say I want to modify this uh, plan document a little bit so i can go like v uh, sorry vi main.tf okay and i can go for adding some more things over there now if i go for adding some more things that will now become um, you know modify instead of create so it will become like change it will not be called as create so let us go and let us try to do something else let's say i want to uh, add tags okay I can add tags like this I think tags uh, huh. I can add tags like this so whichever tag you want to write down right so let's say I want to write down the name tag so name is let's say this should also go in double quotes I, I believe let's say automated ec2 let's say raise the name for example okay uh, 
it should not be double quotes look like arguments names must not be quoted okay fine so this part will not be quoted okay it is telling that this is not written in the correct way so let us go and let us try to write it in, in a correct way all right hang on a second uh let me open it up argument and block definition required okay i think this tags will come with an equal to sign and here we go us east one right see this now all the data is coming every single data right every single data is coming along with that it is going to add this new tag so, so you can see there is one to change right there, there is nothing to add this is changing what it is changing it is adding the tags part this is the part that is being changed right so now i can go for once again terraform let's say apply and it should be changed immediately come back refresh see are you getting the points guys any doubt you can uh, what is the difference between plan and apply the plan is just checking plan plan is creating the document plan is actually completely creating the because we are writing the main file in the main file we are writing half of the information right even, even just two three lines of information so plan will be creating the entire information about the particular ec2 means if the ec2 does not exist that is why it is asking the asking the, the region also in this region if this particular uh, ec2 does not exist it will create a blank plan file where all the parameters will be there uh, but it will again ask, uh, again ask uh, during apply no? During apply, it is not. It is not asking. It is just showing that this is the plan we are trying to apply. That's it. When you are doing plan, let's say already the machine is running, so it will automatically fetch the information from AWS and it will be populating in the plan document. Plan means with the information, the entire description of this EC2. That is the plan document. Okay. When you are applying, it is just showing the plan for you. That's it. Okay. So while configuring, uh, configuring, configuring the pro uh, profile, when we have given the keys, no, at the time we have specify the region us is one right sorry come again so while we are uh, giving the speed no at the time you have specified the region us is one right correct so uh, so we can so can we launch it machine this uh, same machine on other in other you can launch it anywhere on aws the only thing is that you need to have permission to do that if you remember when i did aws configure i only gave permission for aws us is one right it asked for a region na? aws configure and i did it asks for the access key, secret access key, region, and output format, right? Yeah. So there I had mentioned US East one. That is why I'm, I'm I'm stuck over here. But if I give some other region, I can play in other regions also. So uh, is it mandatory is there to give the region, or it will? If you are using AWS configure, then yes, it is mandatory. Otherwise, what you can do, you can create a role and attach the role over here. So if you give the role, then it can play anywhere, na? I mean, this Terraform machine just give it a role. Then it can play anywhere. There will be no region-specific bond bondage for that. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Just create an administrative access role and give it to this particular thing. That's it. What is the difference between the cloud formation and AWS Terraform? Cloud formation is a AWS's own tool. I mean, can you launch a cloud? You know, uh, let's say virtual machine on Azure cloud using cloud formation? No, right? No, yeah. Cloud formation is Azure. It is just like the difference between. Kubernetes and EKS. EKS is also there, na? Yeah. It, it is Kubernetes on AWS. So EKS is there. So EKS you can launch Kubernetes, but that is like AWS specific. Cloud formation is AWS specific. Only in AWS it is present. How will you use other clouds with cloud formation? Okay. That is more or less the idea. Let us see uh, a little bit more things. So if I want to delete this machine, I can go like, uh, you know, there is the destroy command. So you can use the destroy command. You can go like. Let's say Terraform destroy. That will actually kill the entire system, right? So let's go for it. US is to one. It, that is why it asks the region, like which infrastructure you want to destroy, like that. Okay. So it is writing minus minus, means all these things will be deleted, whatever it is writing minus. So when you are doing destroy, it is deleting everything, right? 
and now you can see if you come back over here refresh it will be killing it and here we go killing it right so let it kill it anyway so we shall be creating another uh, you know we shall be editing the plan document now to make things like this that we want to find out that how many instances so if i want to launch multiple instances together how i can do that because one one instance is uh, not enough right let's say i want to launch multiple instances so let let this thing get killed done so it says that it has been done let us go ahead and let us try to open up the main.tf once again so let's say so you can add a new parameter known as count over here okay so let's say count are you okay count let's see equal to i'm writing 10 right uh shall it come in double quotes i have to see that not sure let me just check it on i think double quotes it will be count 10 but it is a number right number should come in double quotes uh, okay anyway fine let, let's let it I mean, what is this let it be let it be like this whatever whatever it is looking at looking like okay so now what i shall be doing see i shall be basically mentioning that i want these many number of uh ultimately these things right these many number of let's say count i think it will not be double quotes if it shows me error i'll correct it but i don't think it requires double quotes. so now i'm telling that i want how many i want uh 10 such machines okay so that's your that's your count basically ultimately and also let us say this now this this provider and you know the provider also you can mention over here okay i am div dividing into two different files the provider could have also been mentioned in the same file but that's okay that's okay i i can actually see one thing i can do i'll save it anywhere so uh you know i'll save it anywhere. now if you try to come to a provider basically right so if you come to cut to provide provider you can actually this region what we can do I mean, you can do in the sense, I can actually go like, I can write down over here that it's a region equals to, and uh, okay, let us do one thing actually, okay? Let us actually play a little bit with the variables. You will understand this is a, this is a cool thing that you can do. Okay, or else or let's, let's write it down. Let's say the region is US East one from here. Okay. I'm writing the region is US East one. And now if I go for, let's say, uh, I don't know, I think I will do the init once again. So let me go for a Terraform init over here. I don't know if it will take it or not. Okay, it has taken it, fine, great. So let us try to now go ahead and let us try to create the, no, I have the main document with myself and since I've mentioned the region already and in the main also I've written the count equal to, let's say 10. But one thing I want to change in the main actually, that is, I don't want to you know give all of them the same name automated ec2 automated i don't want to do that i want to give it some name that makes more sense so i want to go like let's say automated ec2 and uh, okay something like this let's say i'll call it like this ec2 hyphen and then basically uh whatever the count is means ec2 ec2 zero ec2 one or let's say we'll do plus one so it's like ec2 one ec2 two ec2 three like that so you can write it like this dollar I think it has to be within here. It's a dollar curly braces. This is the format. Dollar curly braces, and then you have to write it down basically. Uh, so dollar. Where is it writing? Uh, so dollar curly braces, and within the curly braces, we can go ahead and we can write down that what we are trying to talk about. So let's say we're going to talk about uh, this particular thing, right? So AWS underscore instance under dot my underscore instance so basically you have to give the entire path aws instance under that my instance under that count whatever the value of count is i want to add plus one with it so when it is zero it will become one so one it will start from one because typically count will start from zero right so this is something that i can try out let us see if it works so let me go for like terraform plan Okay, there is invalid count attribute. Uh, this count, it, it is saying it will not take like this count attribute is no longer supported after Terraform version 0. Point is length. No, 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 no. It has got it, it, it has got me wrong. It is thinking that I'm going to check, check that. Ha, cha, ha. This thing you can do. Count.index. In this way, you can do it. Let me copy this. Okay, so I'll just come over here.
Like let us listen six, okay, six two eight four seven. This is what is telling. Refresh state will be refreshing Terraform state in memory prior to plan this particular thing. Partial state to local or remote storage calculated. What is going? What happened? What is this error all about? Mm. Okay, hang on a second. I think I edited two times now. That was the problem. Let me do an ls la. What I have? I have the tf state, tf state backup. Let me delete these two files. So star dot tf state. Oh, sorry. Now let me go for Terraform plan. So this has been deleted, right? Oh. Oh my God! I deleted these two also. That's so bad. Okay, I'll just create it once again quickly. Not an issue. I'll just, I can just create the main.tf also. Within that, I can write down provider. Not a big deal. So I'll just quickly go ahead and do that. So cat, let's say main.tf. So I'll write the provider directly over here itself. Provider, let's say AWS, right? And I'm going like, let's say region uh, equal to, let's say US east one okay and then let's say i'm going to write down the resource uh, let's say aws instance okay and to call this thing let's say my ec2 something like that okay and we'll start it over here and uh, i want to write down like uh, let's say uh, ami equals to, I need to take the ami hang on a second let me quickly go ahead and do that Let's say this one I want to launch, right? So, am I equal to am I dash paste the data and that's it. Am I equal to this? And after that, let's say I want to mention the instance type equal to t2.micro, right? And then I can go like, uh, okay, count. Let's say equal to 10 and tags equal to let's say and go like uh, okay so in tags what do i have i have a uh, name i want to go for let's say ec2 hyphen right dollar curly braces and within that i'm writing aws underscore instance dot my underscore ec2 count dot index okay i don't think it works like this uh we are doing something wrong when i'm trying to do this uh it will not be like this it will be like dot count dot index i think dot index i think so or it will be like that let me see or it will be so this is it and there it ends we can end tags Internet resource, right? So that's it. So now we created this. Let me go for Terraform FMT main.tf. Yeah, so this cat the main.tf now it has been changed a little bit. Let us try to do a Terraform plan. Let us see if it works. Okay, uh, it is not like that. It will be in square bracket only. Let us go and let us edit it. So we have to do resource is equal to right. Sorry? Resource is equal to where? Uh, third line. So resource is equal to. Third line? A resource AWS instance my ec No, why should it be equal to? A resource. No, no. Why should it be equal to? It's correct on there, I think. Yeah. Are there? What is cycle error? Okay. So you want to, what is this particular error? Refresh state will be. 
used to calculate this plan will not be persisted locally remote state storage okay it is unable to take this particular thing but why is it doing so uh instance 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 of the remote state and in memory prior to plan this refresh state will be used to calculate this plan okay let me do an ls LA, let's see what i've got okay i have this particular situation as of now okay i'll just do one thing hang on a second i'll uh, cut this main.tf i'll make a new directory okay in my let's say oh that is the wrong spelling but anyway that's fine so just move my main.tf to let's say over there and i'll just come out I'll, I'll i'll delete this particular folder called scripts right so let's say rmrf scripts as initiate ones in terra scripts It is failing, right? It is telling that it is not working out. Let me see uh, how I can do this thing. Because uh, I'll find it out. Hang on a second. Just give me a second, man. I don't want to get this thing go wrong. Count is the variable, but it is, I mean, is it happening for the zero? I don't think it is happening for the tag. The tag part, I think, is perfectly fine it is happening because of uh, this particular situation where i'm writing this particular count and it is unable to go for the particular that that is what the issue is Achha. uh wait a second I think this will go into double quotes, the count part. That is where this issue, issue is happening. I think so. Let me try it out once, just in case. No, it is getting the same issue. It is telling that, how will it work out? So let me do one thing, wait. I'll tell you what happened actually. When I wrote that, uh, you know, EC2 in AWS instance dot my EC2 dot count and within that count index, it became, it was acting like an array. So it was like the entire thing was being pushed into the tag. The entire definition was being, got the point. It was considered as an array that within AWS instance my EC2, whatever the count index is, the entire data that was being pulled out, not, the, not only the value. Clear, guys? That was the array that was I was using, right? So from array, I was just putting out one value. That is why it was becoming like this. That how can you put the value within that? So it was becoming an infinite recursive call was happening, basically. That was an infinite recursive call that was happening. That is why it was, it was not working out. Did you get the point, people? Yeah. It was an infinite recursive call. Within that, it is calling again. Within that, it is calling again. Within that, that is what it is calling. Okay. So now that you have got this particular thing, we can go for Terraform, you can see 10 to add, right? So we are adding 10, this one. And if you look at the tags, see EC2 10. The previous one is EC2 9, right? Like that. So the count index it is using. Terraform, uh, apply. And it should be done. See, it is not asking about the region anymore. Just write down yes. Because the region is now mentioned in the provider directly. All these machines are getting created right now. 10 machines are there.
and all of them are running right so they are up so if you come back over here you can see 10 added now there is a, a particular thing and the thing that you need to learn right so this is more or less what you can do with it right so creating something deleting something and playing with something but now if i let's say if i want to delete a specific resource out of all of them so there are a lot of resources i want to delete only a specific one how i can do that so i can go like terraform destroy okay and i can mention target so just see the help so there is something known as target the resource you want to target right so that one so you can go like terraform destroy target let's say i want to create i will delete the resource which resource i will delete uh, ec2 underscore uh, sorry aws underscore instance now you have to write in that way instance right dot my underscore ec2 and uh, let's say five so the fifth instance will be deleted this is how you do it now if i do it see enter the value yes so you can see the one it is deleting is only the ec2 five right so only this one right so if you look at its tag it tag should be six because in the tag we did a plus one right so the fifth means the sixth item this is deleting only one refresh see only this one is dying ec2 six so this is how you delete even if you have launched multiple things how can you delete specific resource you can delete a specific resource just like this. Clear, guys? Yeah. Uh, but how will you know which instance, which who is using, or uh, like how, what to delete? Okay. So now, typically, when you are writing, when you are deleting, uh, okay, how you know which one to delete? Now that that should be your choice, right? Which one to delete? But anyway, the idea is when you are running through a loop and creating all many resources, then that definitely means all of them are going to start at the same AMI. So they're going to have the same thing. Probably you are planning to put them under a load balancer or something. That is why you are creating all these resources. Otherwise, why will you create the same resource replicated 10 times? Maybe these are all web servers. You want to create 10 web servers for yourself immediately. So you can use Terraform for doing it. And then uh, typically we do not delete, destroy one on resource like that. We destroy the entire infrastructure. So how is how does the next plan of action go actually with this? I mean, this is all about Terraform. Now you can, you can you know keep on creating resources of your own choice. That's it. But the question is how is how is the plan of action going? Plan of action goes like this. Now you are creating this particular Terraform file. Let's say I mean sorry the Terraform infrastructure that you are building. Uh, you have a project also about this. So what we have to do is. Now, after this is created in the TF state, if I show you the TF state, right? So once I can do an LSLA, you'll find out there is a file called TF state, this one, Terraform TF state. If I cat this or let's say VI this, right? Terraform TF state, you'll find out that about all the machines that are running, everything is written over there. So one, one machine, right? So every index key one, right? So all the machines are there, index key two, index key three, index key four, like that. So it is in JSON format, right? So now what we typically do is that, now we'll be writing a script to just pull out the, uh, to iterate through the JSON format, right? To iterate through the JSON is very easy. So you can very easily write a code for that. You can iterate on the JSON and then you can just pull out the private IPs. By pulling out the private IPs, then what you can do is that you can actually supply it to your Ansible and you can get that thing added to your Ansible hosts file. So whichever resource is being created by Terraform can be automatically managed by Ansible host, right? That's what we do. We create Terraform resources. We run a loop to pull out all the private IP addresses, right? So for that, you need to do shell scripting and all those things. So once you pull out the private IPs, you can just simply supply that particular. I used to use JavaScript, JavaScript, shell script, Python script, anything is fine, whichever you know. I typically use JavaScript for doing it. So using JavaScript, I'll pull out all the uh, things, all the private IPs, because JavaScript gives you a very flexibility to anybody. If it's shell script also, your uh, this one also, Python script also, any script, they give you a fix flexibility to pull out the uh, one one element of out of. So now it is in array format. A lot of machines, ten machines are running. So all the ten machines are in the array format. I can just go ahead and I can just pull out the what private IP addresses and send those private IP addresses via SSH to my Ansible host. 
if i send the uh, those things via ssh to be ansible host using this particular format using echo file name text we can actually enter that particular data in our host file and then what will happen now next time or not so whenever a playbook is running or let's say a play is running on ansible it will immediately pick up those things also because now ansible all will mean those machines as well so just in the next iteration of the of the machine or all command it will pick up all the machines so now these computers will also be these servers will also be considered as a part of that clear got the point Okay. Uh, so we can so can we remove the instance based on the tags? Based on the tags, uh, which we have. Given. You can do. You should be able to do. Let us try to do it. I never tried it. I mean, typically we will be destroying the entire. Nobody removes one, 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 one instance. Okay, based on the tag is this one only, na? The what it did that was also basically the tag was only more or less. But anyway, we can go like that. So you can go like uh, based on the tag, right? So tags. Okay, how how do we write it? I think I have to go like dot tags. Dot tags dot name, and uh, somehow I need to write in value over here. So maybe I have to see this. I don't know. Destroy instance based on tag. Telephone. Uh -huh. This is this is just to delete a particular resource altogether, completely. Target resource type two name. Okay. No, this is not what I'm looking for. We're looking for using the tag, right? So let us try to find it out now. So see, uh, if I do like this tag dot, and then there now this tags is basically, if you see an array. So since tags in an array, I can go or otherwise if I go like tags dot and within that I want to enter, I'll be writing name. So this should give me uh, the name. Now that has to equal to something some value. Uh, okay. That's bad. Let us try to do it anyway. Mm. Okay, what can I do about this? Okay, if you remember the last time what I did, we basically went and we wrote down that which one I wanted in the square bracket. That is like an entire array I'm, I'm, con I'm concerned about. Okay, hang on a second. Let me see the TF state file once. Are you ready? So it is coming in an array and within that, so this is all of these are things. Uh, okay, we don't want to find, so we can we can do it like this, probably. Let us see. We can do, I'm not very sure how to do it, but let us see this. So, where is the previous one? Let's try everything. Are they? I'm not finding the destroy I'm looking for. Anyway, leave it. So uh, AWS instance dot my underscore EC2. And within this, I, have to, I think I have to write down. So now here, I need to find out the particular tag for that one. Let us see what it is giving. If I, uh, okay, no, actually I need to see because I'm not getting any response. I mean, I cannot think about it. Let me think about it. All of these things they're doing using array only. So the, uh, let me see the destroy uh, terraform destroy specific resource example. Uh, 
resource targeting you can see just like that not going to target for root operations The name resource uses count and master index specified in the address. All of the instance sharing the given resource name and are targeted. Okay. Like this now. So yeah, so I think I was doing it correctly only. Resource type dot resource name resource index. So this is one way. See count equal to four three. This is one, and uh, they're writing a for each loop over here. Okay, the first of the example instance in the config. Hmm. So if I consider like this, so this is my tags. Let's say this is the key value pair. So I'm kinda, I have to use this and I have to go for the value. I don't think we can do it. Not very sure. Maybe, maybe there is a way, but I'm not finding any as of now. Least. Let me try it out. My EC2, let me think, let me think about, think by completely by myself. So it is actually looking at the TF state file, okay? In the TF state file, you've got a lot of them. So I'm going to go, trying to go for the, uh, Okay, within this, should I go for an array value or something like that? I think I should go for an array, first of all, because this is an array. And within this, I have to go like tags, and then which is once again an array. And uh, let me see, let me try to do this thing. Tags zero equal to, this, this will probably not work out, but let us see. Tags zero equal to, let's say, ec2 hyphen one. So this one I want to delete, let's say. No, it didn't work out okay. We simply write tag zero to eleven. All will get deleted, is it? No. It is not happening like this. I'm not really sure about it. So I think uh, you have to do this little research by yourself. I'm sorry about this because I don't know this, how to do this. Okay. Yeah, okay. And I don't also seem to find out any exact help. You might, you might try it out on Google or somewhere, or maybe you can just put it on, let's say Stack Overflow or something, because I don't see a exact way to find it as at least as of now, right? Acha. And uh, let's say if I want to destroy the entire thing now, even 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 if one is deleted, it will not have any problem. I mean, we can simply go for writing Terraform destroy it lower code. It will not tell like that, hey, you have already destroyed, you know, one of them and the others cannot be. Nothing like that. If you go for Terraform destroy, everything will be destroyed. Simple. See, just taking one of them. This was your file, right? So this is what we tried to do. AWS instance.myec2. With the AMI ID, we can delete. Uh, but... Fine. So let's see if I delete everything, it will be deleted. Now see, I'm deleting every single thing, right? So all the things will be deleted ultimately. Acha, more or less it was understandable, right? I'm not sure if you will require this because Terraform is not uh, exactly a very popular tool as of now. The, the, the maximum this thing should go on Ansible. Your focus should be on Ansible for configuration management. In fact, for if I talk about, talk about the entire DevOps things, whatever, you know, the, the things that you have learned till so far, right? And I should say, you know, the entire DevOps course, what you have learned now. So you got your most important things. One is your Jenkins, extremely asked. One is your Kubernetes, Docker, those kind of stuff, things, extremely asked. And another one is your Ansible. These three things are asked, actually, right? Extremely asked. That is the thing. 
right so these three things become very uh, you know clear about them right other than that i don't think any, you will need something else when you're going for an interview or something like that but anyway in case you're stuck somewhere you're particularly free to um, let's say you know inform me about that particular thing right just get just hang on for a second man just a second this is deleting you can see it's taking a little time Okay, all right. So now uh, I'll do one thing. I'll explain you the project part also. So you people are interested in doing the projects, yes? Shall you? Yeah, yeah. But before that, Vishal, I want to ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. Now today is the last class. Now, if suppose we have some doubt, how do we approach you? You have to approach the institution, and they will in turn approach me. Okay. Okay, because that didn't happen last time. So I directly asked you that day. When? When? Which day? Uh, once, day, once I had asked you about the Jenkins, right? I didn't. I was not able to send an email, and then you told uh, there's something else you had to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, that, that thing. Uh, did, did you did you call your representative and inform yeah. him about it? Yes. 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 I had uh, left a message on group also. Nothing happened. So I'm like, how do I reach? That no. Message? Don't worry about it. So who did you try to reach? You try to reach your. Uh, Sales executive or the student representative? Who do you try? Um, I don't know who's the, who who is there in that group. And then there's one more guy called uh, Vijay. So I had asked him. Vijay Vijay is from sales team. He he is not from you know this this part. Yeah, he told so, me put you can the group like there there's so many people in the group. I don't know who are they. Right, so, right, right. So yeah, that is why this thing happened. It is actually this one. You are you have to talk to Gopi. Gopi is a student representative. Uh, I, I think for you he will be there. So him, you have to directly contact. You can call him. You can do anything. So he will, if you require, he can connect a conference call with me. Uh, or, we don't have his number. Okay. So I I think uh, Gopi will be joining the session immediately. Just just because you know to do the conclusion part. So you can just get his number right uh, right away, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's joining in another couple of minutes. Okay. Ah, okay. huh, tell me. Uh, a few days back, I had an interview for the AWS. At that time, they, they, they just asked me regarding the Terraform. So there was one question, uh, what is the folder structure in Terraform? Mm -hmm. uh, what is that actually, folder structure in Terraform? Folder structure in Terraform basically means that you will have to see there are multiple things that you can keep over here. Typically, if you see this, for, yeah, this one, right? The folder structure in Terraform is that in when you create this workspace, this is actually known as workspace. Okay, I mean official term is workspace. I'm calling it scripts because it becomes much more easier to uh, call it scripts. But this is actually known as this one workspace. So in the workspace, you will be you can keep multiple folders. Typically, we create folders, right? We create a folder called vars. Okay, so we'll be having one called vars. So within which we keep out all the variables. So you can give a lot of variables over there. Just hang on a second. Gopi is asking for the password. I'll just provide him once. Um, so that he can also join. So yes, so one is VARS folder where you'll be having your VARS. Within that you'll be, uh, and outside that, I mean within the workspace, this should have been called workspace, VARS. And you'll be having another one known as scripts. Okay. And there'll be another one that will be your uh, providers now in this way you can write down so what happens you can have multiple providers also let's say one is AWS one is this one is Azure and multiple things like that so in your workspace you can create like this the so variables that will be having all the variables like let's say uh, I'll give you a simple example let's say uh, in the main.tf file if you remember right? so here I have yeah, mentioned I the provider region equal to us east one i could have created a var folder within that i've created this particular data and i could have just called it with the dollar symbol right just try to find it out you'll find it it is very much straightforward so that is your folder structure you got a variable section you got a script section you got a provider section so i added everything in the same file because the first time you're doing this thing it should be this way also you can do it in fact in many cases we do it like this because terraform is used only for creation of resources and that's it. The control is handed over to Ansible. Nobody controls the things using Terraform because Ansible is much more flexible. In fact, Terraform is there in the market just because Ansible cannot actually go for 
creation of resources ansible can only manage resource once uh, red hat you know introduces that particular feature in ansible terraform will be out of the market but this is the only reason it is there so that is your uh, you know the way you have to do this thing clear bhagavan you got it okay i'll talk about the project titles so i'll explain the projects in couple of minutes let me get the project names from here the projects are pretty much straightforward and most of them i have covered in your classes itself but anyway so i'll just show you so this three actually so let me open up a notepad or something okay see this thing understandable the first one talks about designing a ci pipeline through jenkins on aws ec2 right so this we have already done you already know how to do this particular thing right after that you are saying designing a continuous delivery pipeline for a java based web application that is take any war file from the internet you can find thousands of war files take any war file just go to tomcat uh, official site there also you will find a war file so just take a war file that is a java based web application on aws ec2 instance on kubernetes cluster so this is going to be the way we, i already showed you this thing how to do on docker through cd right through jenkins instead of docker just run the kubernetes commands kubernetes also commands i have shown you what all commands are there so just put those commands in publish over ssh that's the only thing you have to do so you know this part also you know this this part also you just need to connect them by putting instead of docker commands the kubernetes commands right that pods deployment command basically kubernetes clear deployment that one and the last one is exactly what i just now told you 5 minutes ago infrastructure deployment through terraform and solution for managing that with ansible this is basically when you are creating your infrastructure using terraform just let's like, just like this and then write a script now that depends which scripting language you know if you know if you do not know anything that's fine you don't need to do it but in case you know some let's say i i typically use javascript uh, there is python script there is shell script anything if you know something through that what you can do you can iterate through that particular file that we have the ts stack and from there you can pull out all the private ips right so when you iterate for a json file it is very easy to pull out the private ips so you can just pull out the private ips and then what you can do you can directly put that on and you know, send it to ansible so that ansible can be it can be added to the ssh folder not ssh sorry host folder inside ansible hosts file and then you when an ansible command is running you can very easily you know this will be picked up clear got the point i will uh, you will find this in the text trace website also also i'll drop it in your chat as well so that you can just copy this particular thing right so i've dropped it in your chat you can get this particular thing over there right fine any question about it or is it clear yes yes clear no yeah okay great wonderful then uh, i think that these guys are not yet dead then i think that will be it from my end and uh, i think gopi has joined the meeting gopi you there yeah uh, hi sir hey hi so um, i was just talking about thank you sir i'll i'll take it from here. yeah sure 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 so guys thank you so much i will i will just you know leave the meeting and you people can continue right thank you bye bye yeah thank you thank you uh Hi, Moina, ma'am. Hi, sir. How are you, sir?